This is a video about testing Revit limits and Intel's newest 13900KF 5GHz processor. And strange things happen when you add 100,000 levels to the Revit model and try to render the outcome. So recently I upgraded my system with the Intel's 13900KF processor and some beefier graphics card and I wondered what would happen if I tried to push the Revit limits and how would the new processor hold up and would I feel any difference between this one and my 10 years old i7 processor that I used before. So I started by opening empty project file and went to the section and just started to copy levels upwards with a 1 meter or 3 feet distance between them. So in the beginning it was very fast when you take 10 levels, 20 levels or 100 levels it copies them with no problem but it's way too slow to get to the 100,000 level mark. The first a minute pause was when I tried to copy 5,500 levels, but it's still faster than to manually pan up and down and copy levels by a few hundred at a time. So I keep on pushing, copying them a few more times with 5,000 levels. And when I reached 16,000 level mark, I understood that the struggle will be scrolling up and down the viewport and not losing all the levels. Because when you try to zoom out, uh, the levels just disappear. And when you try to zoom to fit all elements in the viewport, they also disappear. So the only option left for me was to slowly pan up and down without zooming out too far. In that way I can maintain the view of the level tower. So now I'll try to copy 16,000 levels with one shot. Because copying them by 5,000 is going to take too long. And this took a bit longer, uh, 3 or 4 minutes to copy 16,000 levels. And that isn't that bad, considering that I see that it only uses 3 or 4 CPU cores at a time. And now I'll try to double the copy amount by 32,000 levels at a time. First I have to save the file and I wondered how large and how slow it will be the file saving. Uh, it was quite fast. The file size was 2 megabytes, which is a very good size for the file with 32,000 levels. So let's copy 32,000 levels one more time. And this time it took a bit longer. It took me a 10 to 15 minutes to copy. 32,000 levels so now I'm copying again 32,000 levels a third time and this time it took quite a bit longer and it feels like that it's exponentially longer every time the more levels you have in the file the more time it takes to copy same amount of levels for example the third time when I try to copy 32,000 levels it took me a bit longer than an hour so leave a comment if you know why that is and would it be mitigated by using all the cores i would be very interested to know opinions of the software development experts so at this point i accidentally zoomed out and lost the view of all the levels i just saved the file and switched to 3d view in hopes that i could see the levels there but i couldn't see the levels in the 3d view either and I didn't know how many levels I had, so I went to plan view dialog to create new plan views and to see the level count there. And the first interesting thing happened there. When you have that many levels, the scroll bar just doesn't scroll down. It just jumps back when you scroll past uh, 60,000 levels. So the fastest way to scroll down was just to click and press just above the scroll arrow. To use mouse scroll wheel was out of the question, it was too slow. And to use down arrow on the keyboard was also too slow. 
So after a few minutes of holding mouse button down, I was on the level 99,000 something something. So I tried to shift select all the levels and that appeared to be working because I wanted to cr try to create a plan view for each of the level. But first I wanted to reach 100,000 level mark and I selected the missing 200 levels on the above and copied them on top of the 99,000 levels and that was quite fast. And now I'm at the 100,000 level mark. It's 99,900 meters above the ground zero. And I think that's the highest structure, possibly the highest structure ever made in Revit. And I wanted to make it a round number. So I copied one more level. And now it is 100,000 and one levels high and 100,000 meters about ground zero and then I copied a elevation mark and edited the units for the elevation mark so it shows meters and feet for those who use the freedom units and the next big thing I wanted to test is if I could create view for every level in this project so it's 100,000 and one views and it took me about a few hours to copy these levels and I thought that to create a view for every level wouldn't take that long because uh, it's uh, the one of the fastest processors out there and uh, it's Revit 2023 what could go wrong so I scrolled down to the level list again it took me a few minutes to get there and with a little bit of excitement in my chest I was ready to hit the enter key and start the process of creating 100,000 views so let's hit the enter key and see what happens next and in the beginning to my surprise Revit did not crash and just started to process the command I could see that the utilization was 8, 9, 10% just as previously when I copied the levels. But to my surprise, after 10 or more hours, nothing happened and it still kind of processed the command with the same rate of 8, 5, 6, 7% of utilization. So I decided to terminate the task and restart the file because it was kind of impossible to know how much longer it would take to create those views. So I decided to abandon that task and reopen the file and copy the levels to get the exact 100,001 levels. And the next idea was to uh, create a, a little house that was attached on the level 1 and the top would be attached to level 100,001 and again the scroll bar in the properties panel didn't work but to my surprise the scroll bar in the modify tab worked quite well and I didn't have to scroll down to reach the 100,000 level mark so I draw the walls and next I wanted to create a roof and again I needed to scroll down because the scroll bar also didn't work in that dialog so I draw the roof at the top attached the walls to the roof and decided to switch to 3d view to see if I could get some perspective views from down below or to see how it would function in the 3d view so basically it's impossible to orbit in the 3d view whatsoever with the building that high 
The only way to manage the view was to move the camera in the plan view in the middle of the building and in that way I was finally able to get the camera inside of the building and to finally look up and see how the building looks from inside. And the view is magnificent, I dare to say. The panning is as difficult as before, but uh, after adjusting the position of the camera I decided to try to render the view. Because the render engine for Revit uses only the processor to render the image. There is no GPU involved in rendering the image. So I thought it's time to test the newest processor in its rendering capabilities in Revit and uh, I thought that it would be quite fast render but to my surprise the render lagged very much so that I wasn't able to render anything and I don't know why this happened probably the render engine couldn't load the many levels or the super high walls into the render process or something like that and after quite some time just keep kept on jumping between the 0 and 0.35 percent of completion and after half a minute I decided to cancel the process because it didn't seem to go anywhere at first I thought maybe it's because of the large viewport uncropped viewport then I cropped the image and tried that way then I tried to render only the region of the viewport but that didn't go anywhere either so I decided to conclude that the rendering with such high structures is impossible next I tried to print the image in PDF and that was a success without any lags and then I decided to switch the model display style and turn on the ambient shadows and see if that makes any difference but the PDF printed as expected with no problems. So you can here basically see the top of the building is just a little pixel. And then I decided to print the image to PDF without any shadows to see how that goes and that went also as expected and very well. The plan next was to add some textures to the walls and see if that prints as well in the realistic view. And to my surprise the print went also as expected. And next I wanted to send the, the model to the twin motion as now the twin motion is the part of the Revit subscription pack. The model ported to the twin motion without any problems. Next I just wanted to get some images from the twin motion. But in the background I'm gonna play a clip from Revit's Autodesk Ask Me Anything session from last week where I asked about the future of Revit's multi-core processor support. Alright, Ada says this is the most important question. Okay, uh, multi-thread processor usage. The last four to five Red Revit versions, there are no improvements added to Revit help information. Uh, for example, my processor uses a maximum of 30% when panning plans, but the panning is lagging. Yeah, I mean, um, well, a couple of comments there, I guess. So we're always considering ways that we can improve performance. In fact, that's a big area of focus for us as we go forward. Um, sometimes it's not just about multi, uh, multi-threading or processor usage or number of cores. It's about optimizing where the computation takes place uh, and how that happens. And so um, like we added some, some improvements around vector printing um, for multi-process, multi-core in the last update. Sometimes you have to read through our release notes to get a handle on that um, because it might be something that shows up uh, that's already listed as like, yeah, we, you know, at a high level, we, we do printing with multi-printing, for example. Um, but, uh, and to get some of the details, our, our robust release notes can be helpful there. Um, but yeah, performance is a huge topic of interest for us. Um, and, you know, panning, as that example comes up, is probably actually more related to things like how we're displaying things on the screen. Um, and so one of the areas that we're also working on is the ability to modernize Revit's graphics pipeline. Um, which is pretty exciting, but again, a long-term project um, that is not going to be, you know, uh, 
easily obvious in the beginning about what's actually happening because a lot of it has to do with how we're refactoring the whole platform under the hood um, to take advantage of newer technology. So that's something we do all the time with Revit whenever we're in an area, but graphics in particular has a, a pretty heavy lift there because we're also aware that you know, you're generating contractual documents and things can't change. Um, and so that's a big consideration as we move forward in that area. Thank you for watching. Have a great day and see you in the next video.